In section 9.3, we're going to be talking about compound interest. And in compound interest, you are earning interest on <clears throat> what you have deposited into the bank and each day you earn interest that is added on. So you're earning interest on the interest that you've had in the past. So it, it bills up daily or whatever um, amount of time that it is compounded. It might be compounded quarterly. So every three months you would have interest added onto your principal <clears throat> and then uh, in six months, you would have interest added on to the principal plus what you had earned the first quarter. And so it continues to build um, interest. The formula that we use in finding the amount that you would have in the bank if you deposit a certain principal is the quantity 1 plus the rate, remember the rate is a decimal, raised to the t power. So we have an exponential now. Let me remind you that t represents the time in years. So if you're given months, you have to change that to years. And the rate, r, is the annual rate. <clears throat> so let's say that you are, have um, an account in the bank that is earning 3% interest. And they tell you that that is compounded annually. So that means that it's compounded one time each year. He deposits a thousand dollars. So that's the principal. And you want to know how much does he have after one year. Now, this is the formula that is given to you in your book. I like to use a different formula that's a little bit more detailed. A is equal to the amount of money that you deposit plus one plus the rate divided by the number of times that the interest is compounded yearly raised to the NT power. <coughs> So N is the number of times the interest is compounded annually. So if it's compounded monthly, the N would be 12. If it's compounded quarterly, the N would be 4. If it's compounded semi-annually, that would be two. All right, so I'm going to use this formula. The amount that you will have in the bank will be $1,000 times 1 plus 3% 
divided by 1 because it's compounded annually. It's compounded one time per year. So the n in this case is 1. And that's raised to the 1 times 1 because it's compounded one time in one year. So the amount he would have in the bank is 1,000 times 1 plus 1 into 3 hundredths is 3 hundredths raised to the 1 times 1 power. So I'm going to add 1 and 3 hundredths raised to the first power is just 1 and 3 hundredths. And now I'm going to multiply by 1,000, which will move the decimal right three places. So I add a zero. So he would have $1,030 in the bank after one year. Now what happens if the time changes? Let's leave everything else the same. He has 3% interest rate. He's going to deposit $1,000. It's compounded. Let's say now that it's compounded quarterly. Quarterly means four times a year. So that's what the N would be in the equation. The R in the equation is three hundredths. The principal is one thousand dollars. And the time, let's say that he leaves the money in for four years. So the T would be four in the problem. So using my formula, the amount you have is the one thousand dollars you deposited plus 1 plus your interest rate divided by the number of times it is compounded, so it's going to be divided by 4, raised to the NT power, so it would be 4. It's compounded 4 times a year, and the time we are using it is four. Now these are not always the same. It's just coincidence that I chose to compound quarterly and the time to be four years. Let's say if the time is three years, then this would be three. So the first thing I'll do is to simplify the power. Four times three is twelve. I have to divide four into three hundredths. Bring the decimal up. Four into three goes zero. Add a zero. Four into thirty goes seven. Add a zero. Four into twenty goes five. <clears throat> so that's one plus point zero zero seven five, which is seventy five ten thousandths raised to the twelfth power. Okay, you're going to do this first. You're going to take 1 and 75 ten thousandths raised to the 12th power and then multiply that by 1,000. And that will be the amount of money that you would have in the bank if you left it there for three years 
and it was compounded four times a year. Let's say that <coughs> a person is depositing $1,500 in the bank. So the principal would be $1,500. They're going to earn 9% interest. and it's going to be compounded monthly. So the R in the equation, 9% will be 9 hundredths. And if it's compounded monthly, it would be compounded 12 times a year. So the N in the equation is 12. The question is, how much money will he have after, let's say, 20 years? So the time is 20. So now we have all the information that we will need to solve this problem. We have the amount of money he will have in the bank will be the $1,500 he deposited times 1 plus the rate of 9 hundredths divided by 12, the number of times it will be compounded, raised to the N, which is 12, T power. So the first thing that I will want to do is to simplify this exponent, 12 times 20 is 240. The next thing I will do is take 9 hundredths divided by 12. 12, the decimals here, 12 doesn't go into 0, 12 doesn't go into 9. So I add a zero, it goes seven times, seven times 12 is 84, subtract, 12 goes into 65 times, five times 12 is 60. So the amount <coughs> is 1,500 times one plus 75 ten thousands raised to the 240 power. Next I'll add then you will take this to the 240 power on your calculator and then multiply it by 1,500 and that will be the amount of money that he will have in the bank after 20 years if it's compounded monthly, earning 9% interest. Now, if we take the same problem, 
and we change to compound daily, the N would be 365, there's 365 days in a year. So that's the only thing that's going to change in the setup is still depositing $1,500, but now you'll be dividing by 365 and raising it to the 365 times 20 power. So you will multiply this first. You'll divide this next, then add, then you raise it to the power times 1,500. <clears throat> it's surprising that you would think that the more times this is compounded, that you would earn a lot more interest, but you'll find that there isn't that much more that you gain. You do gain some by compounding it more often, but not like you would think. Sometimes we can change the problem, and if we know how much money that we need, Let's say that I need to make a down payment on a house and I need to have $20,000 down payment. So in this case, I know the A part of the problem. I know that I need $20,000. I can get a rate of interest of 6%, so that has to be written as 600. And that's compounded monthly. So that means that my N is 12. The time I'm willing to wait on that is seven years. So in seven years, I want to have $20,000 in the bank. So how much money am I going to have to invest? So in this example, we're looking for the principal. So the problem would be set up as 20,000 is equal to the principal times 1 plus a rate of interest divided by the number of times it's compounded raised to the NT power. So I take 12 times 7. which is 84, then I divide 12 into 6 hundredths, So I get five thousandths, and I'm going to add. I will take this number to the 84th power, and then I will divide that on both sides of the equation, whatever this is.
and that will give me how much money that I will need to deposit. So that in seven years, I will have $20,000 for the down payment on the home. In the next problems, you're going to have to remember back on how to solve the natural log problems because when we are looking for time, if we're looking for how long it will take, we're going to be using the natural log because that's how we solve if the variable is in the power. So let's look at an example. Let's say that I deposit $10,000 in an account that is earning 5% interest. It's compounded monthly. I need for it to have, I need $20,000. So how long is it going to take? So if we if we break the problem down into what we know, I've deposited $10,000. So $10,000 is the principal. The interest rate is 5%. It's compounded monthly. I want to end up with an amount of $20,000 and I'm looking for the time, how long is it going to take? So I set up the problem, the amount I'm going to need at the end is equal to the principal, the amount that I have deposited times 1 plus the rate divided by n raised to the n t power. So the variable t is an exponent so we have to take the natural log when we're solving that. But before we begin working with the natural log, we need to uh, simplify. So I need to work within the parentheses according to order of operations. So I need to calculate 12 divided into 5 hundredths. Well, 12 won't go into 0, 12 won't go into 5. 12 goes into 50 four times. Twelve goes into twenty one time. Twelve goes into eighty six times. Twelve goes into eighty six times. So you can see that I'm getting a repeating decimal. So I'm going to keep one, two, three, four, five, six decimal places. And the last time I divide, 
I'm going to get a 6, then I'll round this 6 to a 7. So I have 1 plus 0, 0, 4, 1, 6, 6, 7 raised to the 12t power. I want to isolate the, the expression that has t in it. But I can add those together. This is a multiplication, so I can divide both sides by 10,000. And that makes 2 equal to 1.041667 raised to the 12t power. To get this variable out of the power, you take the natural log on both sides of the equation. So I would take the ln of 2 is equal to the ln of 1.041667 raised to the 12t power. If you remember the rules for logarithms, the exponents come out in front of the log. And so now I'll use that rule that the ln of 2 is equal to 12t times the ln of 1.041667. So we can bring the exponent down if we take the natural log on both sides of the equation. To get t, I'm going to divide both sides by 12 times the ln of 1.041667. So the 12 goes out, the log, natural log goes out, and you have t equals. Now be sure when you type in your calculator that you type parentheses ln and then divided by parentheses 12 times the ln of 1.041667. Close the parentheses for the natural log and then close the parentheses for the denominator. So this whole numerator needs to be enclosed in parentheses so the calculator knows how much of it is the numerator and how much of it is the denominator. So the entire denominator has to be enclosed as well as the entire numerator. Sometimes we want to solve for the interest rate. So when you're shopping around, banks offer different interest rates. So if you have money that you're going to deposit, how much interest are you going to have to earn in order to get the amount of money that you are uh, needing? So I'm still wanting a $20,000 down payment for the house. So this is going to be the amount I need. Let's say that I have $7,000 that I can put into the bank. And I want to buy the house in seven years. So that's going to be my time. 
the bank will compound monthly. So N would be 12. But how much interest are they going to have to give me in order for this to occur? So we use our formula. $20,000 is equal to, I'm investing 7000 One plus, I don't know the rate. I know it's compounded 12 times a year. And I want to have that in seven years. So I'm going to simplify the exponent. I'll divide both sides by 7,000. So I have 20 over 7 is equal to 1 plus R over 12 raised to the 84 power. Now, <clears throat> I can get rid of that exponent if it's a number by multiplying by the reciprocal because you know that if I have 84 and I multiply that by 1 over 84, that's going to give me 1. And so I'll be able to make that power be 1, which will eliminate it. So if I multiply this by 1 over 84, I have to do the same thing on this side of the equation. So you would... Dear, what is happening? Go away, go away. So what we would do now is have this exponent to be 1, and I would take 20 over 7 raised to the 1 over 84 power. Now, when you top that in your calculator, be sure that you have 20 over 7 in parentheses and then hit raise to and then be sure that you put 1 over 84 in parentheses as well. Now, that leaves us with 1 plus R over 12. So now that's going to make it easy to solve. So I'll subtract 1 on both sides of the equation. So I would have whatever you get when you take 20 over 7 raised to the 1 over 84 power minus 1. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by 12 to get rid of that denominator. So this will be a number times 12. And so that will be your rate of interest. You'll be getting a decimal. Um, I don't have my calculator here. But if you get a decimal like, say this, remember to get the rate as a percent, you have to move the decimal right two places. When you're dealing with credit cards, they give a daily periodic rate
So let's say that you want to pay your credit card off early. Let's say you owe $2,000 on your credit card. And they have a daily periodic rate of So this would be four thousand six hundred fifty-five hundred thousandths percent. But you know that that percent has to be changed to a decimal, which means it has to be moved to the front two places. So the daily periodic rate would be point zero 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 four six five five so this is what you're paying daily so if you don't keep the debt there for a month let's say you're only going to keep the debt for 10 days then you would take what you owe times 10 times your daily periodic rate and that would be the amount of interest that you would have to pay so you would add your interest back on to the 2000 now Let's look at the example that is in your book so that we have the uh, table. If you can follow along, it's example 10. So that you can use the table with me. So in this example, we're beginning on June 4th with a balance of $2,469.10. On June 14th, you make a $400 payment. Well, that doesn't mean that you would take $400 off of this because from June 4th to June 10th or for June 14th, you have used the money for 10 days. So you're going to have to pay 10 days worth of interest on this amount of money. Now, this interest is not simple interest, as I showed you here. This interest for the credit card is compounded. So what you owed on June 4th, the interest you owed on June 4th is added on, and then the interest you owed on June 5th is added on. So. By the time you have 10 days, you're paying interest on the interest that you've earned each day previous. So the way we're going to set up this problem will be <coughs> the amount of interest that you will have paid will be what you owed initially. It's 1 plus the rate of interest, which we said this is our interest rate daily. 
and that's going to be raised to, there's 10 days that you are using that. So the amount, when we add, You're going to take this number to the 10th power and then multiply it by this, and that will be the amount that you owe after 10 days. So that would, when you do that, you get $2,480.62. So on June 4th, you owed this, but on June 14th, you owe this. So now if you make a $400 payment, this is where you are on June 14th. If you want to know how much interest you paid, then you take this number, the amount you owe after 10 days, minus what you owed at the beginning. and you would have paid $11.52 in interest. Now, the problem goes on. So from June 15th to June 17th, You're charged daily interest, less your $400. So we owed this at the beginning of June the 15th. So the time here is three days. So how much do we owe after three days? So we add the one. Raise that to the third power and then multiply it by $2,080.62 and you get the amount that you owe to be $2,083.52. So how much interest did you pay in three days? So you go back to what you owed on June 14th and you take that away from what you owed on June 17th. And you paid $2.90 in interest for those three days. There are two types of interest that we can talk about. Um, the nominal interest rate is the interest rate that we have been using. It's the annual interest rate. The effective 
interest rate is the simple interest rate that would equal the nominal. So, you know we have two different formulas, the simple interest, I equals PRT, and the interest that is compounded. So, whenever we have the simple interest to equal the compounded interest, when those two are equal, then this is the effective interest rate. It's the interest rate that makes the simple interest equal the compound interest. We have a formula that will allow us to find the effective interest rate, and it is where we will take 1 plus R over N raised to the N power minus 1. So, in example 11, You have a bank that offers two saving accounts. One account has a rate of interest of six and three tenths percent that's compounded semi annually. The other account has an interest rate of six and twenty four hundredths percent, and it's compounded monthly. determine the effective rate for each account and which account will earn more interest. So we're changing these to a common simple interest so that we can compare them to see which would be the better plan. So if I take our formula one plus this rate is sixty three thousandths divided sim is compounded semi annually so that's twice a year it's raised to the second power n is two here minus one For account two, the effective interest rate would be one plus six hundred twenty four ten thousandths. It's compounded monthly, so the N is twelve. And it's raised to the twelfth power minus one. When I divide two into sixty three thousandths, so zero, three, one, sixty 
So our effective rate would be 1.0315 raised to the second power minus 1. Over here, I'm going to take 12 into 624 ten thousandths. 12 into 0 is 0. 12 into 6 is 0. 12 into 60 is 5. And 12 into 24 is 2. raised to the 12th power minus 1. So you're going to square this number and subtract 1. I'm going to move my decimal right two places, and the effective interest rate is 6 and 399 thousandths percent. Over here for account 2, I'm going to take this number to the 12th power, minus 1, and I get... Uh, so I move the decimal to the right two places. And now I have a simple interest rate to compare. In account one, we started out with a greater interest rate, but it was only compounded twice a year. Here we had a smaller interest rate, but since it was compounded monthly, it ended up being the better interest rate. So by taking the compounded interest and putting it into simple interest, we're able now to judge which would be the, the best route. So account two would give you um, a better gain.